everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Guillermo. I'm part of the developer relations at uh, NIR. And I'm here today to talk about NIR, the one chain to abstract them all. So today's goal basically is that I want all of you to know that we have two bounties, which add up to $10,000. One is focused on chain abstraction, and the other one is focused on AI. And I want you to go out of this talk, you know, with a good idea of like what is the near tech stack, and also have a clear understanding on how to continue uh, after you see everything I'm going to show. What is our documentation? How you can reach us to out? Uh, how you can reach out to us for support, and also to give you some ideas uh, for the hackathon in case you you know like you want to build something but you don't know exactly what. Uh, I will encourage you all to actually scan the QR codes that you're going to be seeing across the presentation, or at least to, to take pictures of them, because this is going to be like a, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of information to take in. You will not see me coding as much as you're going to be as much as you're going to be seeing me explaining concepts uh, that are like important to know in the air. So maybe we can start with like. Why even use in here, right? Like, why, why do we even care about it? And there are a couple of reasons, right? Like, we're an L1 that is very fast and scalable. Uh, we have one second block generation time, and we're sharded by design. Our transactions are, in average, very, very cheap. We're talking about, like, less than a cent. And we are, like, a certified carbon neutral chain. But besides that, which, you know, like, eventually, I guess that we all going to reach that state, um, I think that an interesting thing about Nier is that it's very user and dev friendly. Because it comes with name accounts, it has a very unique account uh, access key system, uh, it has built in account, uh, account abstraction, and it also has the ability to control up to some extent uh, accounts on other chains. So let's start with the first uh, one of uh, the topic of our bounties, which is chain abstraction. And to talk about chain abstraction, we're going to start with our account model. In here, we have two types of accounts, implicit accounts and name accounts. Name accounts are, uh, implicit accounts are the ones that you might have been seeing like absolutely everywhere, which is like just a bunch of characters. So your account is going to be FB09, blah, 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 and which doesn't tell you much. But we also have name accounts, which are like as the name suggests, accounts that you can just uh, uh, refer to them by their name, like near, gile.near, app and gile.near. So the nice thing about this is that they are very easy to remember, and they are also very useful to organize your accounts. For example, if you have an application, you can start releasing like the version one, the version two, the version three, and also use some other of uh, some other of the accounts to put. For example, for example uh, your DAO or your fund or, you know, like anything else that is related to your account. So it's very simple to keep organized. But also something that is very interesting is that all the accounts are already a smart contract. Like they all can have a smart contract and they all are at the end of the day a smart contract. If you're more, in, if you're interested to learn more about this, I recommend you to uh, scan the QR code, which will take you to our documentation for this. And the second important thing about like near accounts is that they have a very interesting um, uh, access key model in which you might be used to you know accounts having like one key, but in near uh, accounts can not only have multiple access keys, but this also but we also have two type of access keys, which ones which are full access keys and the other one which are like limited access keys. Now, full access keys are like the ones that you are aware, like, or the ones that you are used to in absolutely every ecosystem, which, you know, like, they have full control over the account. They're going to allow you to transfer all the funds, call contracts, create accounts, add and remove keys, because, again, you can have multiple keys. And this is the classic, you know, keep them safe, because if something bad happens to them, like, that, you know, it's bad. It's really bad for you. Uh, but something interesting is that, you know, since you can have multiple keys, you can also just swap them. Like, if you think that one of your keys got compromised, you can just delete it and add another one. And then comes the, what is very interesting, and the reason why I'm spending time to, to talk about this, is the limited access keys, which are a special type of key that can only sign transactions that are calling a specific smart contract. They cannot spend funds, they cannot create accounts, they cannot add or remove keys, they cannot delete your account, nothing. 
they just allow you to call specific methods on a specific smart contract. And these type of keys are meant to be shared. And what I mean with meant to be shared, I don't know if you have seen this tweet some time ago, I found it hilarious about like the future of Web3 gaming, where like every time you shoot, you have to sign a transaction. And for me, this was like very, very fun because actually, the whole idea of the limit access keys is that you can share them with some application and then the application can sign a transaction for you. So for example, like if you want your game to you know, just be shooting and you want to save each one of these shots into the chain, I don't know why, but you might want to do it, uh, then you, know, you can just give the application and limited access to your account and say like, okay, you can call the function save shot into this smart contract and that's it. Like that's the only thing that the application will be able to do for you and it will highly improve your user experience because then you will not have to ask people to sign. Of course, this is an, ex this is an exaggeration, but it might happen that you, know, you just want to store like, uh, we have a guestbook example, right? Like you just want to store like a little message and you don't need to sign a transaction. The guestbook can automatically do this for you. And the important thing about like not only improving user experience is that limited access keys allow to call methods on a contract, but contracts can do everything that an account can. So what if you create a method in a smart contract that transfer an NFT or a fungible token? Now I can give this access key to any of you and you can call that method and transfer an NFT to your account. And now suddenly you have a link drop or what we call a link drop. You can see more information about it in the, in the QR code. Or for example, what if I create a method that when you call it, it creates a new account for you. Now I can give you access to my account so you can call that method and create an account for yourself. And this is very, very, very interesting, right? Because suddenly I'm giving you, just by sharing a little piece of my account, I'm giving you the opportunity to uh, to gather uh, assets, to create accounts, to you know, call other methods in a specific place that I want you to. And that's, the, and that's why like, access keys are so important. Now, the next part of chain abstraction is what uh, we call meta transactions. I think that this is already like a term that has been taken by, by everyone. Which is a building system to write transactions and delegate them so someone else cover your fees. So imagine that Anna.Near wants to create a transaction, right? Like uh, they want to execute something, but they have literally no funds. So what do they do? They create a transaction, they wrap it into a delegate action message. This is like, you know, something like this specific implementation. You can go into the documentation and see what I'm talking about. But the whole idea is that Anna will create a message that then Anna can sign and send it to a relayer, which is just like a server that is off chain. And now the relayer attaches some tokens to this transaction and send it to the network. And what will happen is that the network will take it and execute it as if it was Anna's transaction. So this is a built-in system. You would, like, the, the, there's nothing you know, like weird that you have to, to, to invent. We just have the relayer, you create the transaction and you say, okay, please someone pay for it. And the relayer will send it to the network and cover it. But the important thing again is, Anna, like or the transaction, will execute as Anna. It's not that the relayer is gonna be executing the transaction, the relayer is just putting the money. And then everything else is of Anna. So this is very useful for, uh, for example, like if your user has literally no funds, well, now you can enable them to use the transactions on near by just implementing a relayer and meta transactions. Now, so far, I have only spoken about things that are possible on near. And the next thing that I want to talk about chain abstraction is the concept of chain signatures, which you might have heard. Uh, the, the whole idea of chain signatures is to be able to reach into other chains. Uh, this is an Ethereum conference, so like, let's focus on EVM, but you can also use Bitcoin and, uh, and, and, and other, other chains. So, Behind the chain signatures, the main concept that you have to understand is the one of the MPC service, like a multi-party computation service, which what it does is just a, red, a, a decentralized network of computers that can translate a near account into multiple foreign accounts, like EVM, or, so Ethereum accounts, Bitcoin, Doge, etc. And this service is out there listening for signature requests, and when it says it sees one, it signs them and returns them on chain. So here you can see like we have our, our MPC service that is listening 
And basically, we have Anna that now wants to sign a transaction on Ethereum. So Anna asks the MPC service, which accounts do I, uh, do I own, and then asks to sign a transaction by executing an on-chain action, which is just calling the MPC contract in near. The MPC service, which is outside, is listening to it, captures it, and returns the signature. In between, the MPC contract is just waiting there and then returning the signature to Anna, who can now relay it. So I have a little video showing this. Uh, you can find the example. Now I will tell you where you can find the, this example. Uh, but basically, you can see that there, I'm just logging in with a near account. Now I'm changing which account I want to control. I was controlling the test account. Now I'm controlling the Ethereum account. I'm going to fund it using uh, here a MetaMask. So if you give it a second, then the money is going to arrive. If I move here, you will be able to see that we went from zero, zero Ethereum to 0 0.05. And now what is going to happen is that uh, I'm just going to be sending a request, so like executing a transaction on near, where I ask the MPC service to sign for, me, for it. It will return it to me, and then I just relay it to the network. And that's it. And this example, you can find it if you go through this QR code. For those of you that are going to be uh, working on chain abstraction, I recommend you strongly to look at that example, because basically it's going to have most of the information and most of the code that you're going to be needing at the end. So I will just give you like 10 seconds more in case anyone wants to take it. I see you're reaching to your phone, so I'm going to be just like mindful of that. You still have time. Because so what it, what is going to happen is that you're going to be taken to our GitHub, and in that GitHub you will see like the near multi chain example, and it all will also like within the GitHub you will see the 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 the, the, the um, a link to our documentation. So yeah, if you're going to be hacking on chain abstraction, very much recommended that you look at this. Now, I'm just going to repeat how it works because this is going to be very useful for like when you're hacking. So near accounts can control accounts on other chains by. You first ask the MPC, okay, I am near. which accounts can I control? And it will tell you. And then you say, okay, perfect. Can you create a payload? For example, like by me, may, like that Ethereum account making a transaction to another, like sending me Ethereum to another uh, account. Then you're gonna make a call on chain, just, this is just like a normal function call on a, on a, on a um, near smart contract. And then you're gonna wait. Meanwhile, what is going to be happening is that the contract is going to be, as in the same way, time that you are waiting, the smart contract is going to be waiting because smart contracts in here can wait. And it's just going to be waiting until the MPC contract ans um, the MPC service answers. And once the, the answer is there, that's it. Like you will get your signing transaction, which, which uh, you can relay. Now, so you might tell me, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Like, you sign a transaction, so, so what's, what's so um, amazing about that, right? Like, so the important thing is, like, two things here. Like, the first one is that, thanks to the MPC, you don't need to care about, like, the Ethereum keys, because the MPC is going to be taking care of it. It's not that, that the MPC, since it's like a distributed network of computers, it's not going to be able to, you know, like, take hold of your, of your accounts. It's just going to be there, you know, like, helping you to sign transactions for them. So you know that you know you don't have to remember the seats of all of that. If you have like an Ethereum account, that's it. Yeah. If you have an either account, that's it. Now you control multiple Ethereum accounts. And the second one is that the request was made on chain. So it's not only that any near account can make uh, the request, it's that smart contracts can also make the request, right? Like because smart contracts are also near accounts. So suddenly smart contracts can request foreign payloads to be signed, which means like now smart contract can sign can ask to get a transaction signed for Dodge, Ethereum, Bitcoin. And when you combine all of these things, like the account model with the meta transactions and with the chain, uh, when the chain signatures, what happens is that you have a world of possibilities that, that, that you can build, right? Like you could have a DAO near where people just propose, you know, like different actions to be executed on Ethereum. And it's very cheap to vote and, you know, like to, to, to make proposals and vote. And there, and you can even, you know, like thanks to link drops, you can drop accounts to the people that you want to be voting here. 
uh, you could have a smart contract that triggers transactions in Dodge. Like suddenly something happens on your account and now you are making a transaction in Dodge. You could link foreign accounts to NFTs on near, and now you can sell those NFTs, and suddenly you are selling accounts in a foreign chain. Or you could create drops, uh, which drop assets on a foreign chain, right? Like you just control an account that has an NFT. Now you can drop that account on near, and it has control of an NFT outside of near. So truly a world of possibilities. Now that was for the first bounty. The second bounty is about near plus AI. And what I want to be understood uh, based on like all the questions that I got so far is that when we talk about near plus AI, we talk about near powered by AI or AI powered by near. So, you know, think of like the combination of these two things. Think of autonomous agents that can now transact on a blockchain or think about smart contracts that can take decisions based on AI models in the same way that they were waiting for an MPC signature. Now maybe they are waiting for like a, LLM model to take a decision for them. So this is not necessarily about like infrastructure or like running AI inside of near or like, this is not about like necessarily about like GPU power or computational power. It's more about like, we want you to think what good can you bring into near with AI or what good can you bring into AI with near and what all, with what, all that you saw about like link drops and, uh, and the account model and, uh, and chain signatures. So for example, like ideas are fungible tokens as a way to pay for computational time on, you know, like a, on a computational time of force of like an AI model, right? Like, or smart contracts can shield computation and wait for external input. So maybe, you know, like your smart contract makes a decision about like buying some asset or selling it or like, you know, just make a decision on chain based on what an external model is telling them. Or maybe, you know, it's about AI to help uh, people navigate with three problems. Like, you know, create f fungible tokens, swap tokens using like nat natural language. So I have added here two QR codes. One is about like a small example that one of our engineers created about uh, using ChatGPT through a smart contract is quite fun. And you also can see an AI showcase that happened yesterday where different uh, AI companies showcased what they are building on, on, on Near. So let's talk a little bit about logistics now. Uh, you can find everything that I was, I had talked about in near slash docs.io. Uh, and you, we have a Telegram channel where you can find support from us. And uh, this is the QR code that I put at the beginning, which will take you to the bounties, the documentation, information where to find us. And I will make sure to add uh, the, the, the hackathon ideas in there. We also have a booth, so please feel free to come and say hi. We are both like marketing and technical people there, particularly I'm technical, someone else is there for support. If you have questions about like how this works or like how code works or like you're coding and something is not working, just please come and, and, and ask for help. We are here for that. Thank you so much.